we're looking at the newest entry in the Glock family in this episode of Airsoftology Review. That's right, this tan beauty here is the G19X, or Glock 19X, and the X, well, it stands for something extra. And we'll, we'll get to all this. I don't even think it, I don't know if it stands for extra or not. But we're going to talk about this gun. And yes, it does come in tan. It's the only color it comes in right now, uh, just like the real one. And if you guys didn't know, this was one of the offerings that Glock put in to the bid to win the military contract. Unfortunately, they didn't get to make it all the way and take the military contract. But in turn, we got an upgraded Glock 19 with some extras. So let's talk about the outside. We'll talk about performance and what's going on inside. So I say upgraded 19 is actually, to be honest with you, a totally different gun here. We're looking at um, the 19, we're talking about like it's a hybrid of a few different things, including some new stuff. So first off, if you guys are familiar with the Glock family, the Glock 19 or G19 is a kind of compact pistol, not subcompact, but compact. And this keeps the same dimensions from front to rear. The G17, which is the longer version, kind of like full frame pistol, if you want to get to that, it's also longer this direction. Well, the 19 would normally stop about right here and the 17 is this. So it's the this direction of a 19, but this direction of a 17. What that means for you, is a larger magazine, a little bit larger magazine here, you're not dealing with that compact size, the tiny size magazine, which means more gas, more BBs, more shots, more rounds, but you have a smaller or the shorter slide. So you actually will have a little uh, faster cycle time because there's less travel distance to go to the back on this one. Uh, and you know, small, a little difference in the barrel length on the inside, but there's some also cool stuff going on with the technology. We'll talk about internals here and what they've done. If you guys wanna know, speaking of they, this is OEM'd by VFC. VFC's actually been doing a lot, or if not all of the top tier Glock pistols for Umarex. It's licensed by Umarex. Glock uh, was able to give the license over to them. They won that license last year, and we've seen nothing but a flood of pistols, including the Gen 3s and Gen 4 Glocks, the 17s, the 19s. There's an upcoming Glock 18C, which is the full auto version, but this is the newest version as of the time of this video. Aside from the tan color, by the way, the magazine is color matching. It's in tan. It's kind of like a powder coat on it. It seems pretty darn durable. We'll get to the magazine here in a second. Like I said, uh, it is the Glock 19 this way, so you're going to do with a shorter, it's not as long, so the big flashlights will hang off the ed edge a little bit. On the 17, they kind of go. You can use the smaller flashlights if you want that flush look. This will fit into your G17 holsters, most of them, or I'm sorry, G19 holsters, as well as G17, because it's a little shorter, as long as they hook on to this point. The width, the dimensions, things like that are going to be pretty similar. When you get to Kydex, though, it will be a little different, but I'll show you why in a second. Slides like this, two-tone, uh, metal barrel, metal metal slide, polymer lower frame, metal on the slide release and the, um, the uh, pretty much there on the sights as well, metal back plate and metal magazine. Everything else is polymer, including the base plate, which has the Glock logo on it. The lower frame, it's textured for Gen 4 on this one. Glock logos on the side, oversize mag release button, so it's easier to hit than the uh, the Gen 3s. The trigger with the integrated safety is also polymer as well as the takedown pin here. But there's good news about the takedown. Um, again, teasing what's going to be in internals in a second. You do get a rail segment here in the front is the Glock style. So it has the one notch, the rail, it'll fit most standard Picatinny rail or most uh, pistol rail accessories. You're going to be able to get that on there. And also you can use the uh, Glock one. So you get a flashlight with the Glock adapter saying like this is for the Glock. You can do that and it'll lock into this little notch right here. It's kind of rounded off on the front. Uh, so when you're uh, reholstering it, it's pretty easy to work with. Metal sights on the front and rear I was talking about here, they actually have the Glock logo on them on the top and on this one too. So it has that nice big bright white dots, two in the back, one in the front on that. Metal outer barrel, metal inner barrel, metal hop-up chamber, and pretty much metal parts on that. Externally, what's cool about this is if you look on the magazine, this is always the tell, by the way. You see there's a notch here in the magazine this side, but there's also a notch on this side. Now, you normally would have a notch on this side of the magazine, the right-hand side. That's for the mag release to catch. When it goes in, it locks over here. But if there's one on the left side, it means it's AMB compatible, ambidextrous. So you lefties, righties, both of you are going to be very happy. You can take this mag release and flip it around. So... Right now I've got it up, set up because I'm a righty for right-handed use. You can actually pop this thing out really quick. Just uh, if you want to look how to do the real one, it's the same way. Take it, flip it back around, put it in there, and voila, you end up with a ambidextrous 
mag release. And that is so cool. So if you are a lefty, you want to run this thing full-time lefty, you can do it. But you're going, Jonathan, what about the slide release? Well, for those of you looking, you'll notice you've already seen it. The slide release is over here. That's why I talked about holsters. Make sure you're using a holster that accommodates this because this is not normally on a G19 or a G17. This is your Ambi slide release. There's one on that side and one on this side. The one on this side, the one that would normally be for your lefty right here is a little oversized. It, it sticks out a little bit more than the one on the righty. So they're both there. Just to me, it feels like it has about a millimeter more of use. So if you want to lock this thing back, you can which I did with this thumb right here. But if you also want to lock this back, I can do it with my other hand. So if you're lefty or righty, this thing is fully ambi. And then of course the mag release will flip to right here where this black part is, and you'll be able to hit it no problem. Finish wise, the coating looks nice. Satin finish on the tan slide part here. The polymer, they did a good job. Pretty good job matching the colors. They're darn close. They actually match the real ones pretty darn close too. Uh, the logo, the Glock logo, the 19X, Austria 19 by nine, all etched into the slide as well as the Glock logo. Uh, fake serial number here, which is on every single lens the same because the actual serial number, the real one, is here on this little metal plate. But the serial number here matches the one on the barrel. Some Glock markings here, Glock markings in the actual sights. Everything you'd see from a normal Glock. They've moved it over to this and it's really nice. Like I said, metal uh, outer barrel all the way. Really overall looks good. Fit and finish is definitely top notch on this. It is, it's coming into that premium gun. You'd expect it to be nice. And of course, when you do get it, it is nice. Also, the magazine. So since you're running the 19 this way, which normally you'd have a limited size magazine, it'd be in the teens, you actually have the full size Glock magazine. So you can take Glock G17 magazines or you can put the really long G18s in. You cannot use the G19 magazine. So use the G19X, which are tan, or you're gonna use the G19s or the G17 magazines. Now keep in mind, if you're using the 17 magazines, they may not be ambi, so you will lose that ambi. So if you are a lefty, you're probably gonna wanna need to pick up the exact magazine for that. They have the fake round count on the back, but internally you're looking at 22 rounds. Now I think you can jam a few extra in here, but uh, 22 is really gonna be what I would recommend stopping at so you don't have any problems wearing this thing out, maybe crack the follower, things like that. Also on the follower, you can slide this thing down. There's a wide enough gap here. You can speed load from the side, not have to speed load from the top. It's always nice. So you can kind of hold it back with one hand, speed load into the side of the magazine here, and it will continue to fill up. I do like that they do that, but it's not so wide that it'll fall out. It double stacks all the way up. Uh, you're definitely gonna probably stick with the stock magazines. I tested this. Uh, these mags interchangeable. There's mixed use with other brands. Uh, it's roughly compatible with the Marie spec, but not perfect. So for a good seal, I was noticing there just wasn't that great power for the seal. Uh, stick with the uh, factory mags on this, the VFC ones that are OEM, the Umarex, the officially licensed ones, uh, just for the best performance. And last on internals here, we're talking about the hop up. And normally to do a hop up, you got to go through this process. You got to go, oh man, I got to take this gun down. I got to pull these little slides and I got to take this apart. And then I got to look in here and I got to twist a little tiny wheel. And okay, I think I got the hop up set right. And all right, I'm going to put this thing back together. And on a Glock, at least it's easier to do that. And I'm going to go, oh, okay, well, hop up's not right. Let me take it apart and do it again. And it's kind of a guessing game. What VFC has done is so awesome. Included in the box, you get a small Allen key. And right here on the spring guide, right there, that part, there's a little hole in the spring guide. In fact, I can go and lock it back. Um, it's a two-stage spring guide too, like the uh, Gen 4s. I mean, they even went to that detail. Like they actually made it just the same. On the spring guide, there's actually, if you look closely, it's hex, it's Allen key in there. You put the Allen key in and you adjust your hop up right here from this. Now I'd recommend not having a BB in the chamber so that way you don't over tense it down and all that, but you really can just make the adjustment, shoot, make the adjustment, shoot, make the adjustment. Okay, I got it right. You don't have to take the slide off. The only time you need to take the slide off is for maintenance, cleaning, uh, maybe to relube it if you wanna do that, if you're not using green gas. I highly recommend using green gas. But overall, an incredibly awesome improvement. We're gonna be seeing more of this from VFC. Gone are the days of us having to tear down the gun every time we change BB weights or you, you change brands of BBs that may not hop the same or the temperature, humidity changes and the bucking might change the way it engages the BB, all those things. Uh, the age of the gun, you have to continue to adjust. Don't have to worry about it anymore. And I love the fact that they did that. If there's nothing else but this pistol, I think that is so 
awesome and amazing that they're putting it in their guns. And we're gonna see this across other guns, not just the Glocks, but other VFC products are going to be moving that. Um, finally, in the safety, no internal safety on this one is integrated in the trigger. I know most of you probably know that. You have to actually press the middle of the trigger, but there's no actual physical safety on this. So in the safe zone, some fields, um, they require physical safety in here, so you'll have to take the mag out on this one. No big deal on that, but that's just the nature of Glock. They want to do the same thing, not add a function or feature that wasn't there. Fill it all the way up with the gas, right? And the gas fill valve on this one is underneath the base plate. So you're gonna have this little notch right here. You're gonna grab that and you're gonna slide that base plate forward. It's going to expose the fill valve there. You're going, Jonathan, where's that? If you wanna be really lazy, you can drill through the logo. They wanted to do it because they wanted to make it look like the real pistol with the Glock logo on the base plate. You pull it forward and you'll be able to fill and then you can kind of slide that piece here back. It's kind of like the follower from the top where you load the BBs, it's the opposite on that. So once you get it loaded, gassed up, because you're dealing with a smaller, the shorter slide, which takes a little bit of the weight off of it, and the, the travel distance is a, the shorter like the 19, but you don't have the shorter 19 mag, you got the bigger mag, it's kind of like putting the 17 mags in the Glock 19, you have a really snappy pistol. Double taps are super easy on this because of that slightly shorter slide. The, the weight's not too much, the power of the magazine because it has a little extra capacity, the way they've tuned this thing, it just feels crispy and snappy and you can get on target. It is accurate at, at pistol range. It's perfect, it works for me. FPS is perfect for field use pretty much anywhere. We're looking uh, in the FPS. In fact, you can see here the meters per second. I'll do the conversion for you as well on the screen so you can see what the FPS is on that. All good, no problems, everything is pretty much on par with what you'd expect from a Humorex offering because they're the ones telling the factory what to set for the power, for their markets. The one I have here is a USA release, that was my test here, but you're gonna see pretty much identical power levels where there's no restrictions worldwide. And of course, in countries where there are power restrictions, you're gonna see the appropriate power levels on those markets, which means if your power's turned down, you might see more gas efficiency out of your pistol. The other downside is the price point. Um, this will vary by market, but it is definitely on the high end. Uh, you, you're paying for the Glock license, you're paying for the engineering, you're paying for a brand new pistol with new molds, new tooling, new everything. None of this stuff is reused, so tooling and molding cost a lot of money. Um, and with all the Glock lineups, it's priced competitively, but it is definitely on the high end of the pistol scale. So if you want the officially licensed one, which is the only one on the market, uh, and if you want something that is good quality, this is what you're gonna have to pay for. So the downside is, is the price point. It's not a huge downside, depending on who you are. If you're getting, you want a good sidearm, this is nice, um, and it's worth the investment. In my opinion, I definitely gonna pick one of these up myself, but if you're on a tight budget, you may want to kind of look around. There are going to be other versions. I'm not sure on the 19X, but there are other tiers of Glock offerings that Umarex offers, different levels uh, that move all the way down to like a partial blowback that are more budget friendly. But this is on the high end. To get this, to get the finish, the color, the tone, the performance, the snappiness, you're going to be paying that premium price. Uh, and again, like I said, just check the holster for fitment. It shouldn't be a problem on that. And of course, when the 18 drops, you can grab the long 50 round mags and put those in here. So you can go from 22 all the way up to 50, have that big monster hanging out, and then you can really rock and roll on the field. Okay, that's it. By the way, if you guys want to know, I don't know if you can see it in the frame, the box is, is back here. That's the packaging. They actually have nice packaging on this one. But yeah, definitely, if you guys are I've been holding out for a Glock, you've been kind of torn between the 19 and the 17, you don't know which one to get. I wasn't sold on this until I was sold on it, until I picked it up. I like the larger grip of the 17. The 19 is just a little tight. I actually have a real 19 back in the States or I used to have one. Um, the, the 19 is just a little, it's like almost want to hang off in the bottom for my hands. I've got average size hands, um, but I like the shorter barrel. I don't need the extra barrel. It's airsoft. You don't need that extra anyway. Um, I think overall the balance of this, it's kind of the right Glock for me. And with the AMB, if I ever want to just quickly do a mag change on this side, I probably won't ever move this, the mag release, but if I want to be able to drop that slide, if I want to lock back or something like that, I have the option. It's nice to have that little extra piece that you normally don't have. So anyway, I want to know what your guys and gals thoughts are. Do you like the peanut butter coyote brown? I kind of do. It's grown on me. The more I look at it, I think it's really well done. Photos really don't do it justice. I do think it looks better in person. I want to know what you guys think though. If you've seen one of these, have you bought one of these? Are you planning on picking one up? Are you a Glock lover or are you a Glock hater? Let me know in the comment section below. Either way, just be civil down there. 
Also, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment, of course. We'd love to join the discussion. And more importantly, if you haven't done it, mash that sub button and hit the notification bell so you can get notifications for the uploads that come every single week from this channel, reviews and question and answer shows. So anyway, until next time, go out, play some airsoft, have some fun. But no matter what you do, call your freaking hits.